can be of help to you, Knight. I hope so too, buddy. It was young Zmoller. What? Zmoller's the one responsible for all the thefts and death. He tried to kill me and Lesha. This is, God knows who Man, else. this is like four Shit. episode, four or Jesus. five episodes back. I Where did this quest. Now? Dead. I killed him in self-defense. So is that the end of it, do you think? It looks that way. Leshek was helping him, but he's dead. So things should settle down from now on. God bless. Even so, we'll have to reconsecrate the monastery. I'm looking for some quicksilver. Would you have any on hand? Call to my assistant. He deals with such trivial matters. Fine, thank you. Good luck. Hey, who's your assistant? Oh. Jesus oh, this Christ guy doesn't great. look shady at all. Do you have any quicksilver in stock? Who's asking? I'm here on behalf of the master fresco painter. He said you sent him away empty-handed three times already. Then I don't have any. That sounds almost as if you don't want to sell it to me. It's not that I don't want to. It's that I can't. Hmm. Sympathizing for this, just talking doesn't seem like the. I gotta intimidate him. Bollocks. Tell me this instant what you've done with the goods. Nothing. And I'd advise you to calm down. We're on hallowed ground. You're a fine one to speak of hallowed ground. A lying thief in monastic robes. What next? A whore dressed as a nun? This is blasphemy. I'll give you blasphemy. I'm sure you know what our Lord did to the money changers in the temple. What, what do you mean? <laughs> You're not going to hurt me, are, are you? Tell oh, me what's man. going on here and I won't have a reason to. Jesus. Drop the WWJD. I, I didn't know anything about any counterfeiting. For your sake, I hope that's true. Now tell me what's been going on. I swear, I, I wouldn't normally do anything like that. Get to the point. Uh, they came for me at noon. Directly to the office. The overseer was somewhere on his rounds. Some night, it was, without a crest, armed. He called himself Sir Yezhek, and he had a lackey with him called Rapota, a scruffy fellow with a yellow cape, always whistling he was. They told me they wanted all the quicksilver we order for the monastery. Of course, I told him that wouldn't be possible. And then what, did they threaten you? Uh, not at first. They tried to bribe me, and when I refused, they started threatening. What did they threaten you with? They said they know people in the monastery, that they'd have me thrown out and beaten for stealing. And you had been stealing, I mean before then. You know how it is. I work my fingers to the bone and they pay me a pittance. So they knew about you? Yes, they knew my name, everything. How did you hand it over to them? I take it up the hill behind the monastery here. There's a big tree there with a small chapel underneath. Sometimes Raputa is there waiting for me. If not, I leave it there. Very well. Thank you. Cool. Good. Mr. Oda. Respects to you. Master Armorer. If it's another one of his so called generous offers, you can go straight back and tell him I'm not selling, and that's that. No, this is another matter. Vitus wants to challenge you to a duel. What? <laughs> Me fight with that brat? Zack must have lost his mind entirely. That's not how it will be. The real duel will be between your pieces of handiwork. How's that? It will be a duel with bludgeons. No bloodshed. At most, a few bruises and some dents in the armor. Zack chose me to wear Vitus armor. And so I'm to choose a champion of my own? 
That sounds reasonable. Good. So let's agree on the time and place. Hold your horses, young fella. I've got a counter offer for you. Now I'm sure Zack is paying you well. I won't deny it. I could pay you more. And I'd tailor make a cure us just for you. What do you mm. say? You mean if I fight as you're a champion instead? I'm not sure how Zack would take it. No, no. You fight on Zack's side and lose. <laughs> oh shit. What do you guys think? I like Oda. I like Oda better. And I think whoever I choose to help is who comes to my settlement. Yeah, that Zach guy's kind of a dick. All right, I'll do it. Wonderful. Zach won't know what hit him. So, choose the time and place. What, me? You're the one being challenged, so it's your right. Well, it's all the same to me. Go and sort it out with the bailiff. He should know about it anyway, so I don't look like a troublemaker. All right. Master Blacksmith. Not now. Goodbye. Come closer, my friend. The yo bailiff. I hope I can be of some humble service. I'm here on behalf of Blacksmith Zack. Zack? What does that madman want now? Don't tell me. It's another complaint about the Master Army. Well, you can tell Zack if you waste another minute of my time with that pathetic feud of his. I'll have him up for disrespecting the office of the bailiff. No, it's not a complaint this time. In fact, Zack came up with an idea to settle the dispute once and for all. Is that so? Well, that's a different kettle of fish. That's just what I was after. You have my full attention, friend. What's his plan? A duel. Jesus Christ! Has he lost his wits entirely? Don't worry, Goodman Baylor. No one will get killed. It will only be a duel with bludgeons. Zack chose me as his champion. I'll be wearing a suit of armor made by his son, Vitus, and I'll fight Otter's champion. Whoever falls first, loses. <laughs> that sounds like a fine spectacle for the village green. Naturally, I'll have to be present to ensure nothing untoward happens. <laughs> Your presence is certainly expected, Bailiff. We'd like you to referee the whole duel. Very well. We'll have it on the marketplace in the front of the church. But when? That's up to you. We can announce it right now. Let's do it. I'll have it announced around town. You come along at just the right time. It'll be a fine show for the townsfolk. And I'll finally get that pair and their constant squabbling off my back. God be with you. See how it goes. I think it's going to be tough to just lose. Good citizens of Sassau! Our township has long been plagued by a protracted dispute. As you are no doubt aware, Zack, the blacksmith of the monastery courtyard, and master armorer Otto Rabstein have been, for some time, at odds. Ha <laughs> ha! That is hammer and tongue! And in so much as it behoves my office as bailiff to settle such disputes and maintain peace and order, I have decided to resolve the blacksmith's quarrel by unconventional means, whilst affording an entertaining spectacle. In short, we shall let them knock each other's teeth out. <laughs> However, since it ill befits two respectable tradesmen to maul each other on the market square like a pair of cocks on a dung heap, each of them has elected a champion. Zack, the blacksmith, has appointed to fight in his stead Henry of Scarlet. 
and Master Otto Rabstein's champion will be... <laughs> Please, introduce yourself, Sir Knight. Master Otter! Well, oh, fine, shit. Master Otter. I don't need some young pup to take my place. Dude, Master Otter's a fucking ch badass. I, I like him a lot. This will be a duel with bludgeons alone. And until first blood is shed. Come, folks, be sensible for heaven's sake. I feel like I should have saved before I done this, because, like... God forbid murder. So, if both contestants are ready, let us begin. Come on, hit me. God, he sucks really bad. I'm afraid to hit him anymore. trying to make it look believable but like he's not blocking my swings at all <laughs> reputation loss what the hell are you playing at you blockhead that old fart made a complete fool of you Sorry. Otto was just too good for me. Damn it. I should have known you weren't up to it. Well, I'll just have to think of something else. But the bailiff said the duel would end the dispute. Quiet! Don't annoy me more than you already have. Now get out of my sight before I shove that bludgeon up your ass. Yeah, this guy sucks. Come for my reward. It's a good thing you're here. I'm glad you didn't change your mind about throwing the duel. You could land some hefty blows if you wanted to. Maybe. I'll give you one of my older pieces, but I adjusted it so it will fit you like a glove. Thanks. If you ever need anything else, stop by. I will. Master Blacksmith. I've got a great offer for you. I'm with you, lad. Ever since we put that bastard Zack in his place, I've had peace and quiet here. And I'm damned if I can get used to it. We finished building the new armorer's workshop in Privet Slavets. Now all we need is a skilled master armorsmith. Oh, you don't say. Well done, Henry. Who'd have thought that village of ghosts would ever come back to life? And I appreciate that you thought of me. But do you really need an armor a shop in the middle of the woods?
Money is usually a pretty good sure thing. I'll gladly give you a bit of coin to get started until your new shop starts turning some profit. Yeah, whatever. A thousand gold. It's always profitable to expand trade. I'll lead the shop here to an apprentice. And we got ourselves an armorsmith. Good luck, then. I'll make that gold back in a day. Easy. Hey. What's that? Garlic, onions, what? mushrooms, and asparagus. Come right on. No need to be shy. Salami, sausage, lard. Got a problem with me, Bucko? What you gonna fucking do about it? What shape should be? Has your manhood been wilting of late? Then buy this powder made of a. Huh. I know you. I know you from somewhere. Hmm. Where do I know you from? What? Of course, my dream. You were in a boat made of bones, and I put a crown of thorns on your head. That's weird. All right. Tell me about this dream of yours. That dream? Yes, that dream has come true. I dreamt that a young man would become my apprentice, my own pupil in the trade of miracles. And that's supposed to be me. Oh well. What's your name? You are the main character, after all. Henry. Henry. Hmm. A powerful name. So, Henry. Carrots Are you ready to become my apprentice? Today to put a smile on your face. Well, what exactly does it entail? Make becoming your apprentice. Oh, a lot wood, of work and strenuous labor. Knowledge of medicine, it. theology, and white magic. You have to study the great works of the ancients and devote Onions your time to understanding your, your like fellow men. Listening to them and learn to read their souls. I don't want to do all that. <laughs> Nothing to it. That's why God has sent you. So what do you say? <laughs> All right, I'll be your apprentice. Wonderful. Oh, glorious day. I have a successor in my work. So how do you plan to start training me? With a test of your practical skills. Oh. I have my eye on three rare objects of great value. But sadly, they're a little difficult to obtain. Go on. First, I need a tooth of St. Procopius. Then I'll need a branch from a topping out hung on a church. And finally, a talisman. Or luck. I'm a passionate player. Bloody hell, that's a lot. All right, one thing hmm. at a time. About that tooth. It's going to be slightly more complicated, isn't it? I know. Yes, it would be very difficult to gain such a rare relic, of course. That's why I have an alternative solution. I'm listening. A layman named Procopius lives by the monastery. And it just so happens, thanks to my intricate medical knowledge, that I found out he has a sick tooth. From the yard or from the wood, lane and fat. And how am I supposed to get the two? I haven't the faintest idea. Come you'll have to say. think of something. But maybe you'll be able to persuade him to let the blacksmith pull. How did he find out he has a sore tooth? Uh, as it happens, he told me at the tavern. But that's not important. <laughs> Fine. I'll get it from him. Wonderful. This topping out, what's that? <laughs> You're not a carpenter, it seems. No, I'm a blacksmith. I see. Well, uh, a topping out is a decorated spruce or a conifer tree hung on top of the roof of a new house to bring good fortune and God's blessing. That topping off is hung pretty high, isn't it? Naturally. It hangs on the rooftop according to tradition. And the church is tall. And how am I supposed to get it down? 
Damned if I know. But they had to get it up there somehow, didn't they? Very well. I'll get it. This player's talisman. Where am I supposed to find it? I actually have a specific one in mind. Here at the inn, there's a dice player who always has a cat's hmm. paw with him. That's supposed to bring him luck. Cat's paw? A cat's paw? Our I thought Lord players bring along a rabbit's paw for good luck. Bread and for uh, uh, I thought so too. But this man is winning one game after another, so cats are clearly even more powerful than rabbits. Oh. Very well. I'll get you the poor. Well, to probably beat him in dice. I'll get looking for those things then. Excellent. You do that, my journeyman. Good luck. What's he training? Will you teach me how to? Certainly. I'm interested. Wouldn't... Well. Salami, what a shit show. Sausages, lard of all kinds, and scratches to make your mouth. They're back to the greetings. What business have you? You look different, Master. So as to fit in. I don't want it known that I'm in town. Right. So what have you found out so far? I found out where they get the copper sheets from. Really? So tell me. It's the smith on the monastery craftsman's yard. He supplies the counterfeiters. Do you know how he gets the goods to them? No. All I know is that someone called Rapata collected the goods. Not much, but it's a start. At least it's not a common name. Listen, Henry. I had another thought on the way here. Those counterfeiters have to have a punch die to make the fake coins. Yes, of course. That's sophisticated work. There's a man I know who works at the monastery yard, master engraver Jerome of Silesia. You don't suppose that he's... No, not that, God forbid. I know him well. He'd never do anything like that. But he runs an engraving workshop, so he might have heard something. Very well, I'll ask him. But ask with tact. I don't want him getting offended. And I prefer you not to mention me at all. I'll try to think of something. His hairstyle is awesome. I found out where they get their quicksilver from. You were right, it was the monastery. Hmm. It was the only logical explanation. It changed hands on the hill behind the monastery. Have you been there to have a look around? Not yet. Maybe it would be worth the time. I'll go and see. And have you found out who's behind it? Rapata, once again. The same scoundrel. That's all. See you later. I'm honored that you should come to me. It doesn't look good. What? What are you talking about? Your tooth. But it hurts a lot, doesn't it? How do you know about that? As a practitioner of the healing arts, I recognize the signs of a sick tooth. You have a bloated face, you're sweating, and the way you breathe is absolutely typical of the condition. You're a physician? Isn't that what I said? And if I can give you some advice, you should have it removed. There's a blacksmith down in the town. No, no, no. There's no way I'm putting myself in the hands of that butcher. I understand. But look here. I know about healing. I can go along with you and make sure everything goes as it should. You do that? Of course. Jesus Christ. I'm a grown man and I need an escort. You don't have to be embarrassed. Every man in the world's afraid of having his teeth pulled. I know, but even so... Let's go, then, and get this over with. All right, let's do it. Hold him tight. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> ah, look! Jesus it's Christ, out! The agony. They want to keep it as what a memento. I, I love it. This? Oh, all right. <laughs> I'll have it. I'll fucking take it. God save you. 
How goes the work, Master? Getting there, getting there. You need something, my boy? You've got quite a large workshop, Master. You don't do all the work alone, surely? I'm usually here with my apprentice, Florian. Of course, by simple observation, you'll note that this is not currently the case, and I'm here alone. Which means that either I'm a liar or something out of the ordinary has occurred. Um, I see. I think. So what's happened to Florian? He shares the fate of the pharaohs for today. The fifth scourge of Egypt did smite him. The plague. Or so his message advised me. Jesus Christ, the plague. Do remain calm. I'm quite certain the plague from which Florian is suffering wasn't a judgment from on high. Or if it was, it was a judgment on excessive drinking. I'm told such an ailment can be of truly biblical proportions. What's he like, your apprentice, Florian? I'm afraid that his exuberant youth has taken its toll. He's been acting strangely of late. I fear he has delusions of persecution. I don't really know what you mean, at all. Well, recently, for example, he told me that someone was following him. And the very next day he bought a padlock from the blacksmith and locked up his chest. As though I would ever sneak into it. In any case, why the interest? Are you looking for him? Something like that. May I ask why? I have a message for him. A message? Who would be interested in that maestral? Other than his furious and deeply disappointed master, of course. About your question, you'll find him at home. No doubt feverishly dying. He sleeps in the baker's cellar. Ah, thank you. Does Florian have any enemies? A man such as he certainly owes money at every turn, and the parents of local girls are undoubtedly displeased with his attempts to propagate. However, most I recently, like how this guy from the Barbs, who accosted him in quite a spectacular rage. A woman from the Barbs? What did she do? The harpy nearly tore all Florian's hair out. I don't frequently feel sorry for my ne'er-do-well apprentice, but on that occasion I made an exception. Do you have any idea why she did it? She was screaming about some girl, some flighty bathmaid, Esther. I would say that Florine had felt the joys of spring and acted accordingly, although one would have thought they'd be used to that sort of thing at the bathhouse. Thank you. I'll leave you to your work. <laughs> 